Okay, folks, let's uh, continue setting up our cameras. Uh, let me get back to my uh, default camera and uh, another angle that I'm thinking about. Let's so just go ahead. Let's just make this uh, 500 frames for a moment so we have a bit more range. Um, In frame 220 and an angle like this, okay, I think would be nice. Let me just uh, create a camera here. I'm going to go to that camera again. I'm going to change my uh, length to be very wide. In this project, I mostly used wide angle cameras, uh, and let's just change this to something like 15, and that's going to be very nice. Let's put something like this angle maybe uh, just name it camera 220 for uh, frame 220 and uh, I'm going to just duplicate this camera and let's go to something when the second wave is sort of about finished maybe just go to round number something like 320 for the moment, I'm not sure yet, so let's just change the angle. Sorry, uh, go to your view, undo the view, so you get back to the uh, last camera view. Select your uh, second camera and let's just change the angle of it. Maybe to something like this. Now we have one camera here, another here, and if I go to my default camera. What we can do is we can start in here and as time goes by we can get back to here for example if we want. But because of the uh, way the motion I think is it's just nicer this way. Let me just have a quick render and uh, let's just adjust this angle a bit more so our, we have a better and nicer angle and frame 220. I think something like this isn't too bad. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, name this camera uh, camera 320. Now we're going to be using a uh, functionality inside uh, Cinema 4D called Morph Camera, uh, in which you can morph between two cameras uh, and then blend between them. So let's just uh, select your first camera, select your second camera, uh, come here to your camera and you get this uh, camera morph. Okay, click on that and uh, you have a new camera under null and that camera as you can see has two inputs for camera one, camera two. You can have more inputs by changing this uh, source mode from simple to multi-morph if you want to morph between multiple cameras. And now you can simply go to this uh, morph camera, click on this icon here, and uh, let's go to frame 220. Uh, control click on this blend amount, blend amount, and let's go to frame 320 and change the blend to 100%. Control click on the blend amount again, and now you get this sort of motion. Let's see how it's looking like with play. Okay. Uh, this uh, hair thing here sorta in the way, uh, and we can offset it uh, really simply if you go to your uh, hair setup here and select the uh, main hair. There we go. This is our LMB cache. You can actually uh, using this while you. Uh, offset it and get different uh, part you can for example offset by 100 uh, frame and uh, it would possibly appear on this side when we are in frame 200 at, and 320 so uh, we possibly have to change this uh, sort of uh, stuff when we uh, need to render this exact frame so you go through your cameras and render them and when for example you get to this camera you can simply change the uh, tracer 
offset here but let's uh, just uh, have uh, a render here a render in between and a render in uh, final frame and see uh, where we are and uh, we if we uh, think it's nice that's great if not we're gonna have to change our uh, framing a bit so let me go through and render these uh, three frames and get back to you okay so we have these uh, three renders from our uh, frame 20, uh, 220, frame 275, and frame 320. And I think general speaking is nice. Uh, I think these um, lines and hair like sort of thing is just uh, getting in the way too much. But uh, I, I really think we can just uh, keep it this way. And uh, when the time comes to render this uh, camera, we can actually change this if we think but uh, let's just uh, leave it there for the moment and um, so this is our uh, morph camera let me just uh, rename this also so uh, camera this is our third camera let me just select all of them alt and g to group them camera 3 220 320 and you can add a morph to the name here so this is uh, for this one and let's go to our layers and actually make sure our effectors are uh, hidden let's go to another angle let me get back to my default camera another angle that I really like is uh, this top view and Let's just take a look and see which frame we want. As you can see here, and our sugar factor, let me enable it here too. I think I'm going to stay. You can see this is our first burst. So. I'm going to actually go quite close. Let's create a new camera. For this camera, I'm going again very wide. Let's see how it's going to work and how it's going to look for us. Let's get back to that camera and I'm thinking about something like this. And let me just animate the position of this camera. So uh, we are moving. Uh, let's just animate the position and rotation a bit maybe later on so let's frame 282 or something like 276 would be enough let me just set up a keyframe and let's move along we'll go to this view here top view as you can see we have too much cameras and it's really hard to see which one is the right one so let's just move it in our top view in the y axis okay so maybe something like this the we can maybe move a bit 320 okay and let's set another keyframe for our camera and let's see where we are to our in our motion with play so actually going to stay with this camera until 300 maybe 40 let me just make sure the timing is right let's just have a quick render and see how it looks you cannot see really decide how exactly the render would be uh, let's just take render and see uh, where we are
Okay, so you can see really uh, going to these really weird angles, uh, that's what makes your job quite something uh, different from what other people do because uh, people normally would go to something quite normal. So in order to make your uh, design something extraordinary, you have to go to some extraordinary uh, stuff like camera angle and stuff like that. So this is not too bad. Um, let's just see the motion and see the first. Let's have a quick render in the middle and see how it works. Okay, so I think this is not too bad, and I think we can continue and see. I'm going to, uh, this camera will be from 276 to something like uh, 333, so Let's camera for 276, 335, let's see. Okay, so this is about this camera. So there is just uh, one last camera that we have to set it up and that's gonna be our uh, last camera uh, and uh, let's set up that too. Okay, so let's uh, set up our uh, last camera and the last for this final motion okay <laughs> um let's see what we want to do and where we want to this is where our shader filter comes to play about frame 350 300 and we can Okay, let's uh, just disable this main corner for a moment, so, and um, also for the final camera, we would possibly, uh, we're not going to use this uh, hair-like thing, and we just clean up our scene a bit, and uh, I think I didn't use the main cloner for the uh, final camera, I just disabled it when I rendered the final camera, so, we just have this uh, main uh, this logo cloner in the middle so let's just uh, make sure go to our uh, hair setup and let's just uh, hide our uh, trace the uh, tracer that we have and uh, let's start moving around and finding out two nice angle and going to something really wide so let's uh, Frame about maybe about here 350 to about 450 again 100 frame for this one too. So let's just uh, set up a camera here and let's name this one 350. And then I'm going to create a new camera and let's name this guy 450. And the next thing, let's just go to this camera and try to make sure it's completely centered. And uh, let's go to its coordinates and see what's going on here. Uh, okay, let's go to negative 90. Let's go to zero. And we're not in that camera here. Let's zero out the X and the Z. And as you can see now, we are exactly in the center of our world and our camera is uh, looking from up. And uh, let's 
quickly render. Okay, so you can see how it actually works and it looks like we need to actually adjust our shader vector when the time comes to render this uh, one to actually make sure it's just working fine. Let's just go a bit higher. Maybe we need to actually change our frame. Looks like this frame is much more better. Uh, frame 500 because as you can see, let's go to frame 400 for this one to 500. So 400 to 500 because in frame 450 our shader factor is still working. So let's go to frame uh, 500 and see if we are going to get a better render. Okay, as you can see now we have our final logo in a nice way and uh, we can definitely continue uh, just let's set up a quick morph camera between the camera 400 and camera 500 that's great okay great now let's uh, simply just put this one down select the first select the second uh, go to your cameras and choose camera morph uh, let's go to frame uh, 500 doesn't matter let's go from frame 500 let's go to frame 400 and change this value to zero. Let's go to our morph camera. Now you can see frame from 400, you get this sort of look. Now you can make it more uh, gradual or you can work on this uh, first camera maybe a bit more to make it sort of a, maybe something like this. So you have a much more of a change in angle and motion. Okay, and this for here, I'm going to something like 1000. So now uh, this is what you need. And also I'm going to work on this uh, blend curve. So let's right click animation and show F curve. And I want uh, it to be uh, very quick at the beginning and then gradually uh, rests. So let's just uh, select this guy. And I think moved a bit control and drag. So we have this really severe change in motion at the beginning. It's very fast and it gradually stops. So let's hit play. Even though it's a, really, like, a little bit hard to see, but uh, the effect is definitely there. It's very fast at the beginning and uh, it uh, then kind of change and so let's go to frame 400 again so let's see and very uh, slowly uh, stops so this is great and uh, in the next lesson we're going to be working on uh, our scene more and hopefully uh, where uh, we've uh, come so far and uh, we are really about to uh, close our Cinema 4D very quickly in maybe two or three lessons and uh, get to Cinema 4D for the final compositing.